Liverpool have a new prince and his name is Curtis Jones. Jones is Liverpool's latest star to light up Anfield and provide crazy excitement when Liverpool play. Jones has always had the potential to be a superstar, but things seem to have clicked for him this season more than any of his previous seasons. So, what is the secret to Curtis Jones's recent rise? When Steven Gerrard left Liverpool at the end of the 2014-15 season and Philippe Coutinho followed suit in 2018, Liverpool's midfield went from having creative midfielders who were comfortable in possession, could set the tone of the game and still make late runs into the box and score, to players who were more known for their hard work and pressing abilities. Liverpool lacked that scary flair from the midfield with the responsibility of making magic happen mostly on their front three, the excellent Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane and Roberto Firmino. Then in came Curtis Jones. He's a highly rated player among Liverpool fans and when Liverpool played Chelsea in the 24-25 season at Anfield, he showed the larger football community that he deserved to be rated highly. In that game, Curtis Jones, who replaced Alexis McAllister in the first team, provided a footballing performance that would make Steven Gerrard proud. He was relentless and he was everywhere. Jones went from defending and preventing Chelsea from scoring to going down the other end and winning a penalty that helped Liverpool go ahead in the game. He also snuck into the box to score a goal in the second half. Jones rightfully won man of the match in that game and it wasn't surprising considering he had 56 touches against Chelsea, the third most for Liverpool with Virgil van Dijk and Andy Robertson being the two players that had more. He completed 90.2% of his passes and was involved in four shot ending attacking sequences for Liverpool, the most of his teammates. Off the ball, he won possession back six times, including twice in the final third, which was more than any other Liverpool player. So Chelsea couldn't find an answer to Jones's football intelligence, work rate, ability to receive the ball in tight spaces, dribble, pass and score. Chelsea aren't the first team who are unable to stop Jones when he's in the mood. There are a few instances, for example, a notable one when he played for Liverpool under 23s in the 2019-20 UEFA Youth League. He was absolutely phenomenal against Napoli scoring a hat-trick in a 7-0 demolition. The Napoli youth team were stunned by Jones's incredible performance. So those who had been following him since Steven Gerrard took over as Liverpool's under-18s coach in 2017 weren't exactly surprised. Gerrard himself had identified Jones as a gem and was determined to see him excel. Gerrard even told Klopp to make sure Liverpool didn't sell Jones and that Jones would be a fine player when Klopp fixed the areas that needed to be fixed. Jones's display during that Napoli game in the UEFA Youth League helped him book a more permanent position with the first team after having trained with them during the 2018-19 preseason before later making his first team debut on the 7th of January 2019 in the 2018-19 FA Cup third round against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Jones made a couple more appearances in the League Cup before eventually having his Premier League debut on the 7th of December 2019 again as a substitute against AFC Bournemouth. Jones showed what he could do in those matches, but it wouldn't be until January the 5th, 2020 against Everton that Jones would burn himself into the memory of Premier League fans. He was part of a young Liverpool team made up of teenagers and reserves that beat Everton in the League Cup Merseyside derby. Jones put in a good shift in that match and capped his performance with an outside-the-box shot that curled into the net to the roaring delight of the Anfield faithful. That goal would be his first for Liverpool and what a way to open your account for the club. He would become the youngest goalscorer in a Merseyside derby since Robbie Fowler scored for Liverpool in 1994. After that match, and as if to prove to everyone that the goal wasn't a fluke, Jones scored another goal in the League Cup against Shrewsbury Town. He then became the first teenager to score in consecutive appearances for Liverpool since Raheem Sterling in April 2014. 
Jones began his career as a history maker and followed up his goal-scoring exploits with another goal against Aston Villa on the 5th of July 2020, coming on as a substitute. Jones ended that season as a Premier League winner and the feeling was that he was going to force his way into the squad. However, achieving this was going to be difficult. Liverpool had a trusted midfield of high-level athletes who fit the way Jurgen Klopp wanted to play, and breaking into that midfield in the 2020-21 season was always going to be a hard task. As good as Jones had been so far for the club, he needed to add some parts to his game before he could break into that midfield. Jones liked to be on the ball as much as possible, and sometimes could get carried away doing that, ending up holding the ball too long. Not scanning his environment also didn't help. This didn't fit the Liverpool midfield of hard-working players who quickly released the ball to their attackers or tried to find another way to make sure Liverpool didn't lose the ball by being composed. Jones lacked that composure at first. He rushed when he should have been calm and also was sometimes too casual in possession. One of the things Klopp loved and praised about Jones was his ability to dribble. But maybe the praise got to Jones's head as he began to draw in opponents to dribble past them rather than taking them on. Jones also needed to be more hardworking in Klopp's eyes, be able to relentlessly press and help his team out defensively. Klopp loved to even single out Jones's defensive performances for praise whenever he played well. So Jones had buckets of talent, but to be a key player for Liverpool under Klopp, he had to become rounded as a player. So. Jones had to continue to play in the League Cup, the FA Cup mostly, and also play as a sub in the Premier League and Champions League, as Klopp also saw his potential, like Gerrard did, and so continued to work on him. When he played, he was impressive. Eventually, he entered the 2020-21 season with 34 games in all competitions and started 22. It wasn't bad, considering the competition he had in midfield, and no, it wasn't about to get any better. You see, Jones had a problem that threatened his talent and potential. In the 21-22 season, Liverpool were on another level. They were a juggernaut and were on the brink of winning an incredible quadruple. The Champions League, Premier League, FA Cup and League Cup were all in their sights. They needed every player available. James Milner, Thiago Alcantara, Harvey Elliott, all the others were locked in except for Jones. He missed two months due to an eye issue picked up in an unusual accident sustained in training. It wouldn't be the last time that Curtis would go missing when Liverpool really needed him. Liverpool won the League Cup and the FA Cup that year. Curtis did his bit to help in the Champions League, but unfortunately Liverpool missed out on both the Champions League and the Premier League. They amazingly beat Chelsea in both finals and both times on penalties. Now Chelsea, to be fair, are looking a lot more organised lately and a force to be reckoned with this season. Click our video here for our take on the Blues and subscribe if you're enjoying the channel. Jones finished that 21-22 season with 27 games, starting 18. It was a massive drop from his performances in the previous season, and this was just about to get even worse. In the 22-23 season, Curtis only played 24 games, only starting 13. That season, Curtis also dealt with injuries again. He continued that trend in the next season, the 23-24 season, with three different injuries. And it was actually as a result of those injuries that Gravenberg managed to have a run in the team. Click here for our video on Gravenberg and how he's changing the game at Liverpool. Still, Jones played 36 times that season and started 24. It was a massive improvement, but there was a worry. It seems that Curtis gets his injuries around that time that he's building consistency, and so they've been very disruptive for his development. Will these injuries eventually have a negative impact on his career, or will he be able to overcome them? Can Liverpool find a way to begin to manage his games to prevent these constant injuries? Will the change in approach to games under Arna's slot also help him? 
under slot in the current season, Curtis has been amazing, and the player himself predicted this during his first few training sessions under slot. Curtis is now in a system where Liverpool will have the ball more and not play heavy metal, high octane football always. Slot likes to mix chaos and order. They press when they have to and go direct when they have to. Their new focus is to control a game. And this is an area where Curtis would be able to affect the game just that bit more. His eagerness to impress Slot when he cut his holiday short to begin life after Arna joined the club has been paying off. Although his decision almost backfired when he got injured in pre-season and Liverpool began their season with the midfield trio of McAllister, Gravenberg and Soboslai. Now these three have been impressive with some incredible performances both on and off the ball and so Jones found himself in the same situation where he had to break into a well-oiled machine. This time it was difficult for him. When he recovered from his injury and started in the League Cup win against West Ham, Curtis was impressive as he assisted Diogo Jota's goal. He got his first start in the Premier League when Liverpool faced Crystal Palace and mostly he didn't put a foot wrong in that match. And then he got another start against Chelsea and well, you know how that went. Jones has been but a part of Liverpool's success this season. Others such as Diogo Jota, Luis Diaz and, of course, the inevitable Mohamed Salah have joined Jones in giving Arna Slot the best ever start for a Liverpool manager in the Premier League. For more on Arna Slot's Liverpool, click here and subscribe if you enjoy. So far, Curtis Jones is outdoing his performance metrics in lots of stats from the last season to this season. As of the time of this recording, he has won 68% of his duels, beating his best dueling stats of 53.9% achieved in the 21-22 Premier League season. Also, Jones is on course to beat his goal stats of scoring three league goals in the 22-23 season. So clearly, there is more to come from Jones. Will he deliver on his potential or will he lose his form to injury? Let us know what you think. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more.